we greet everyone the peace of the Lord those who visit us and the ones who watch us, watching us online we're going to open our Bibles in second King second Kings chapter 4 from verse 8 Amen. Second Kings 4, 8. 4, it says the following. From 8 to 11. Now it happened one day that Elisha went, went to Sunem, where there was a notable woman, and she pers persuaded him to eat some bread, some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passed by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Amen. The church may be seated.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, it is exactly because of this that we are here tonight to praise the name of the Lord forever. The reason why we are here is because the Lord throughout this entire year there are two more days left. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday is already the first. Throughout this year the Lord protected us, protected everything that we have. We're going to find the Lord because many families here have been preserved. Their health, their material life, their professional life, their academic life. And this is all reason for us tonight to glorify the name of this God that is alive and that reigns in our lives. So many doors have been opened. How many plans? How many dreams have been fulfilled this, this year? Brethren that wanted to get baptized for so long, waiting for the right moment. This year they were able to come down to the waters, giving a demonstration of gratitude to the Lord and of definition to the Lord for this path, for everything that the Lord has done. And the text that we read speaks of the experience of a family. A family that apparently they didn't lack anything. They have everything. They were a couple. They have material possessions. They have employees. They wanted. They lived wherever they wanted to live. And a house for sure was spacious, large. They had many employees there serving. But one thing was lacking in their lives, and they were not paying attention to this still, which was that they didn't have a child. They were so used to this that this was not, did not even bother them anymore. And the Word tells us that every now and then, passed by their doors, a prophet, prophet Elijah. And every time that he passed by there, this woman, she would invite him to enter, and then she offered him bread. Surely she put some coffee there and offered him. And he would eat there and then go away. And she began to notice the way the prophet uh, behaved, his posture, his stand as a servant of God. And she noticed that, and one day she spoke to her husband, look, I always come here, and he, that, that man always comes here, and I have noticed something different with that man. And I noticed that he is a man of God. And that made her, uh, caused her to have a conversation with her husband and she said we can make for him make a, a bedroom we we'll have a large area here we can make a room for him near beside the, the wall and we can make a, a bedroom for him and so the next time that he passes by he will have a place to be to stay and that's what they did the prophet then came and the next time he came, and when then he passed by her door, surely she called him, shows to him the room that he was he would have to stay from that point forward, and he went there and rested in that room. And inside of that room, she made there, uh, she furnished it, that room very simply. She put a bed, a table a lamp and there she also placed and also a chair simple things things that anybody could have done even her having resources she could have very much very well 
have done uh, uh, we can have a can make a, a beautiful room with put put um, wallpaper there put the, the bass here put a carpet here very soft and fluffy so that he may enter and she didn't do that truly she she was taken by the Holy Spirit of God she had done something very simple and the prophet enters there and he rests in that place and my brethren the experience of this family throughout this year was our own experience how many times the Lord Jesus passed by your house this year can you number them has he passed by 50 times was it 100 times 300 times 365 days surely because the Lord he goes whatever the need appears presents itself so if throughout this year in a moment of your life there was the need of God to act in your house God was there and that's what God does God visits God is always ready to operate to transform to help out to give shelter to the one who needs to help the needy and it is interesting that this woman here she noticed something that few have noticed and she thought hey this situation of this man coming here eating bread today and a month later she he comes here uh, and eats bread again that's not right that's not enough I'm going to make for him a dwelling I want him to live in our house so he will not he will not only just pass by here he will have here a place for him to rest he will have a place to come and do whatever he wants and many throughout this year missed this opportunity many who have been visited by God many who have been blessed by God in a service in a moment of trial and or difficulty many here saw and received the bless the presence of the angel of God the man of God the prophet but have had not been awakened to accept the invitation that the Lord always awaits for an answer uh, Lord make a dwelling in my heart in my home my brethren and the Lord will continue to be passing by the Lord will continue to visit the homes as many times as it is necessary but he is waiting for an invitation only one is necessary Lord my heart is open my house is open and my house may my house from this day forward be your house your inhabitation in my brethren we need this that woman she had identified something on that man that called her attention she didn't see that man as a, just a common man she saw something that many very few see he was a man of God he he was a sent a man that was sent by God and my brethren that's the role of the church this identification is what we need to make we have been received from the part of the Lord a great gift which is this the kingdom of the Lord which is the project of salvation which is a prophecy of God that is fulfilled in our lives and we need to do according to what this woman did her husband was not seeing the difference in him but she noticed the difference and she said to him look we need this thing of him coming here 
uh, eating bread now and then is not right. We're going to make a dwelling for him. And many times we do not help the ones that are beside us. Only see, we only see uh, seeing only the failure, the difficulties, and not seeing the glory of God. And that woman spoke to her husband. And how many husbands are speaking to the wives? Hey, we need to pray more. We need to read the Bible more together. We need to have the presence of God. We need to be more present. We need to be more involved on the things of the Lord. We need to have made a, a definition on the things of the Lord. Oh, this thing of going to the service every now and then, if whenever we want, we receive a prayer and laying of hand, God blesses, God visits. That's not right. We need, we must have the Lord in our hearts. The visits, the visitations of the Lord, they are good. They are important. But many times, we end up not hearing the voice of the Lord. And that moment, she had done something simple, something that all of us can do. You don't need a lots of things. You don't need to to do here a, a great commitment with the Lord. No, it is something simple. What God wants from man is an open heart. What God wants from man is a heart willing to receive the prophecy of God, to receive the project of God. To, what God wants from man is not a, a great commitment or something that you may not be able to accomplish or something that you may not be able to, to do. But he wants a small room. Uh, he wants just an addendum. It was not even inside of the house, was was near the wall. Why why on the wall? Why on the wall? Because it is on the wall that we divide things from the wall and is your house. From the wall out is the things of the world. When the Lord is around our lives, taking care of us, caring for us, and it's a sign that God is protecting us. It's a sign that when the trial comes, when the enemy chose his arrows, you know where they're going to uh, stop? On the wall. Because in the wall that is the Garden of Israel, it is in the wall that is the blood of Jesus. It is on the wall that is the protection that we need. The Garden of Israel is the one that never sleeps or slumbers. He never rests. For as long as you have Jesus in your heart, you will be saved. And your home will be preserved. Your health will be preserved. Do you know why? Because our God is the one that wins our battles on our behalf. The God is, our God is the God that is always ready to bless and prevent, protect us from the attack of the enemy, the dirt of the world, the flood, everything that the world tries to throw against us, everything that the world tries to place and push into our homes. But there, there, there was a division. There is a space where, hey, not here, because that home is a home washed on the blood of my son. This home is a home that was purchased with a high price, and here you will not enter. And that's why that woman, she chose this. She chose to build a little room there, there, all the way there near the wall. And she wanted this. You know why? Because this same, this same awakening, the same intention that she had, is what causes to, as well, to be in the presence of the Lord. It's the same motivation that 
Martha, she had. When Lazarus died and Jesus went to be with Martha and Mary four days later, at least, you know what Martha said to Jesus? Can re who can remember here? If you were here, my brother would not have died. Martha said this to Jesus. If you were here, Lazarus would not have died. And that's why, my brother, my brethren, this woman didn't want only the visitation of Jesus. She wanted to have Jesus living inside of her, her home. And that's when Moses, when the Lord spoke to Moses, Lord, uh, Moses, God told to Moses, this is a e evil people, I'm not going to be with you anymore. You know that? Th because to the disobedience of the people as they left Egypt, uh, even though they saw all the miracles, the open Red Sea being opened, the manna from heaven, the, the cloud, the cloud of fire, everything that God operated, the people still wanted to go back to and they said, oh, at least in Egypt, in Egypt we would, would die, we would have a cemetery, at least we ate something. That's the place we want to go back to. And God said, Moses, this is uh, evil people. Then he said, Moses, go there, take the people, I'm going to send an angel to go with you, and you go to Canaan. And Moses said, Lord, not at all. If it is not, to be, have your, the presence of the Lord with us, we're, we're going to go back. Moses saw and he felt, he already felt the, the absence of God and what they were going to go through with the absence of God if they remained on their own. Not at all, not at all, Lord. If you are not with us, we are not going to proceed. My brethren, in this same feeling, that the Lord is operating in the heart of Benny here tonight. And this is the same feeling that the, the Lord wants to operate in next year. If you, throughout this year, you lost your opportunities, you lost a chance to have Jesus completely or to be completely involved in the work of the Holy Spirit, you can, from this day forward, make a commitment with God. Do it according to this woman. We want to have a place where will be God's dwelling. And she made there, on that little room, she placed simple things. What she, did she do? She placed a bed there. A bed speaks of a place of rest. bed speaks of a place or where you lay down and then you forget about your problems, where you're going to recover your strength for the following day, where you're going to erase from your out of your mind all your problems, your trials, your deaths, your commitments. Then you, when you lay down, then you sleep, and the ne next day you wake up reinvigorated. You know why? Because the bed is a place of our, of our rest, and our rest is the Lord Jesus. He is our Sabbath. The place of the bed has to exist in our lives, inside of our home. Because when Jesus is in our home, we are renewed. We receive rest, the means to continue in the presence of the Lord. There cannot be discouragement, frustration. There can't be, inside of a, a, a home, Everything that the world tries to uh, smother us, the, the race, race of the day, and the home where Jesus is present, that must be rest, there must be peace, the peace that only Jesus can give. And she also placed there a table. A table speaks about what? A table speaks about the place of fellowship and harmony. It is on the table where the family sits down. That's where you're going to have a conversation or uh, have a, a coffee. You're going to have lunch or with the family. That there is where you're going to have moments, having conversation in fellowship. 
And the disciples of Emmaus, after the death of Jesus, they went out walking. When Jesus died, they went back to go back to their old life, completely blind, without blind, without knowing, without understanding the prophecy that Jesus said, "I'm going to die, but on the third day I will resurrect." And Jesus died. They they are disappointed, and Jesus go to meet with them, manifest himself to them. They don't know that he is Jesus. He's Jesus, but when they made an invitation. Sir, enter the night is dangerous. Spend the night with us. So then, when they sat down at the table, and when Jesus pick up picks up the bread and breaks the bread, at that moment their eyes were opened, and they found out uh, that person was Jesus. It was on the breaking of the bread, sitting at the table. And that's what the Lord. Every time the Lord revealed uh, supper of the Lord. God is saying, "I want to sit down at the table with my servants because I want to bless my servants." Yesterday, on the women's meeting, was a blessing. We had a true banquet. We had a special supper for the we for the women, the ones who are, are coming to the meetings. The Lord said, "I didn't see that single sister didn't cry here." It was a visitation of the Holy Spirit. It was something that only the Lord can do. Why? Because they were sitting at the table with our God. The fellowship was here, reigning. The Lord spoke, and the Lord blessed, and the name of the Lord was glorified. And she also, that woman, placed a table inside of that room. Table speaks about uh, speak a, speaks a place of a conversation. When you sit down, you say, "Oh, I have uh, a problem. I need this." No, sit down. Let us have a conversation. So then, the, you hear the person. You give an advice, and do this, do that. The chair speaks about a place of conversation, where there is dialogue, where there is a conversation, where there is the seeking of the advices from the Lord, where there is a consultation of the Bible. On that room, that home, there are not going to be defeats because the advices from the Lord are the best advices. The Lord never let us be confused. The Lord always says, "Don't do this. It's better if you do that way." And the Lord comes and manifests and shows, and He reveals Himself, and we begin to act according to the instruction of the Lord. The chair speaks of this, and the home that has this, a home that has a dialogue of the Spirit, a home that has the manifestation of God. The Lord is speaking. The Lord is reigning on. The home that has conversation on the Spirit, if nothing else that is. It's not from the spirit. There's no shouting and people angry, and you know why? Because in the home that has the ministration of the angels of God is a home that has what God does, right? Which is reigning and relay the security that that we need. And she also put there a lamp. Lamp speaks about what? Speaks about the place of revelation. A place of seeking of the Lord. If there is light, there is no darkness. If there is light, there is only the Word of God. If there is light, there is what? There is a direction. There is the direction of this pure lamp for my feet is your Word. And it is interesting that the. Lampstand in the temple cannot be、uh, extinguished. It had to be lit 24 hours a day. It could not be extinguished. And it's the same thing with、uh, here with us. The, in the home of the servant that cannot be lacking revelation. We cannot be lacking the direction from the Spirit because the day we lack that, the enemy will enter. The day we We are lacking light. The day we leave a gap, the enemy enter and make dwelling there. And but in the home that has the blessing of the spirit, the direction from the spirit, the light, the enemy will not stay because the revelation, the obfuscate the darkness. Wherever there is light, there is no place for darkness, and that's why, my brethren. It was a simple thing. It was nothing special. 
Everyone had that. A little bed, a place to put a lamp, a table, nothing special. Nothing that uh, somebody would, would be able to say, oh, I cannot do that. All of us can do this. Give room for the Holy Spirit of God to operate. All of us can, uh, all of us have the means. God never required anything from man that we would not be able to do. That's why to be in the work in the kingdom of God is very simple. You just need to open up your heart. You just need to allow the Holy Spirit to touch your heart. You just need to allow the Holy Spirit to testify in your heart. And you need to take a new direction in your life. And if you do this, the Lord will give to you what you may have not been awakened for or something that you may be even used not to want it anymore. Uh, when it happens, uh, he lays down in the following verses, the prophet noticed that there was something missing in that home. And the prophet calls the young man, the, the head of the house, uh, his uh, servant, and he said, what can we do for this woman? She has helped us so much. Uh, all this good that she has given to us, she needs something. What is lacking here? And Jazzy, uh, uh, Elisha's servant, went there and asked to uh, to the woman, "What? What? Oh, oh I, I don't want anything. I live in the land of my my relatives. I'm I'm happy. I don't need anything." So then the prophet told his helper to her, "In in nine months you are going to have a child." She she will have a child, and that happened. Nine months later, a babe was a baby was born, and that home now was complete. And my brethren, the life of the servant only has meaning, and it's only completed when a child is born, because the son here is not is not a physical son. The Son here speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit. That word needs to be understood completely in spiritually speaking. The absence of the Son there was what? Was the involvement of that family with the prophet, with the, spirit, the spiritual, with what was the will of God. That's what they were lacking. She had everything, humanly speaking, but she was missing the, the most important. She was missing the joy. She was not called blessed one because in that family was was lacking the joy of being a complete home and that's what is lacking many hearts they are lacking a son they're lacking a new birth and when you, you give yourself to the Lord what is missing many hearts here we're coming to the end of the year and not everyone can say Blessed be the name of the Lord. But it's very sad. But you know, from this day, from today, from this day forward, you can say, Lord, I'm going to have a new direction in my spiritual life. I want to, I want to serve you better. I want to be more involved. I want to or overcome flesh. I will overcome the trials. I will overcome the things of man. I will overcome my own ego, my own reason, I will be more willing to work on your kingdom, because the servant of God is only happy when he is fulfilling his role, his call, his mission, which is to do the work of the Lord. That's why, my brethren, we're going now to bring the service to a close, and the Lord wants to do this tonight. I'm sure that during this message, during this service, many will say, I will go. In, in my home, we are missing light. We, we are missing the lamp. And from this day forward, I'm going to place this in my home. But in, in many, they are missing the bed, the resting, the trials, the indifference of, of this, of that. It happens. Many also are lacking the chair, a place where the Lord may give you advice, where the Lord may speak, where the Lord may give direction. 
and also many are lacking everything. But at this moment, the Lord wants to give you everything that you need. Because he asks, Jesse went there and asked, uh, what do you need? And she answered, Yeshunamite ans answered, I don't need anything. And now the Lord is asking you, what do you need? What God can to do for your life so that you may have a year of 2020 different than the year 2019? Or you may say, oh, I need to have a, a 2020 better than then right now, the Lord can do this by faith, but you need to say to the Lord, and the question is, what do you need? What is lacking in your life? A son? A greater um, giving yourself to the Lord, a great involvement on the things of the Lord? Amen. The Lord is going to do. You know, as the group praises, sing a song, I'm going to invite the deacons and pastor Sabri to be with us here. We're going to pray for you, and you at this moment, are going to say to the Lord, I need finish this year with the same feeling, with the same will, desire to have the Lord living in my heart. Glory to Jesus. Amen, Lord. Glory to God. Amen.
Glória a Deus. Glória to God. Amen. Surely many have, may have said, Lord, I need salvation. I need more security, more deliverance, health, happiness. I need joy. I need deliverance. I need peace. Truly may also, many also may have said, I need to serve you better. I need to play instruments in your house. I need to be a servant. I need to be uh, an usher. I want to be a woman ahead of uh, the women group. I need to be part of the praise group. Many positions that the Lord may have said that this may not be the moment. But it's not because the Lord doesn't want. Or maybe because you were not in the right position. But do according to what this woman did. Identify it and say to the Lord what you need. In the same way the prophet identified the absence of the Son in that place, the Lord is also seeing your plea. And at the right time, the Lord will give you this blessing. Amen. The ones who can may kneel down or you may stand up. Or, and we will pray for you. And the Lord, at this moment, will give you a special blessing. Because the prophet, the man of God, is here present. Jesus is in this place. And he wants to speak with us. He has a word, a comfort, a consolation. To the ones who need to hear the voice of God. Glory to Jesus. Amen. A minha paz seja convosco. Marquei este encontro na eternidade. Vos trouxe para viverdes mais uma experiência na presença do vosso Deus. Quero iniciar falando a uma das minhas servas. Filha, o teu coração tu pensavas que não viria, mas o meu espírito te convenceu eu enchi o teu coração do desejo de estar aqui para te mostrar que a voz do meu Espírito, ela chama, ela convida para dar vida. E nesta noite, tu estás sendo restaurada no teu Espírito, na tua caminhada, no desejo de viver experiências profundas com o meu Espírito. E eu te digo, filhinha, um grito da tua alma foi ouvido. 
Todas as vezes que entrares em necessidade, faça isso, filhinha. Clama ao teu Deus, e eu ouvirei dos céus, e enviarei o socorro, e te levantarei, te colocarei na posição que eu quero aqueles que amam o meu nome. A um dos meus servos, varões, nesta noite eu quero dizer também, meu filho, eis que eu tenho me agradado, de quando eu te chamo, tu tens dito no teu coração, eis-me aqui, Senhor. Ninguém tem visto, homem nenhum viu o teu eis-me aqui, mas o, o meu Espírito Santo contemplou o teu passo, o teu desejo. Eu tenho visto que tens orado, tens buscado a minha face, e eis que os céus se abrem, e eu derramo sobre ti a minha graça, e eu te preparo para ser usado na minha presença neste rebanho. Ao meu povo, à minha igreja, eu digo, filhinhos, sois privilegiados, porque aqui tendes, no meu aprisco, a segurança. Aqui tendes os cuidados do bom pastor, que é o meu filho. Aqui tendes tido o remédio para as vossas feridas, porque eis que eu tenho ordenado a bênção do bálsamo para fechar feridas, para cicatrizá-las, para que possais seguir em frente e continuar me servindo com alegria. Há poucos dias para vós, no vosso tempo, estareis vivendo a passagem de ano. Para mim, não há diferença, porque eu sou Deus que é de eternidade a eternidade. Mas para vós é importante, e eis que eu estarei ajudando-vos nas vossas decisões, ajudando-vos nas vossas convicções, e na vontade de me servir ainda melhor. Eis que eu estou preparando mais um banquete para aquela vigília. E eu vos digo, vinde, filhinhos, vinde com os corações abertos. Deixai cair toda a armadura, toda a dureza, todo o empecilho das vossas vidas e revesti-vos da armadura do bom soldado de Cristo. E vinde desejosos de ouvir a minha voz, pois eu falarei convosco novamente. Eu abençoo em especial... Três famílias que estão em angústia nesta noite. Três lares que estão numa situação em que têm dito entre si. Basta, Senhor, nós não suportamos mais. E o vosso Deus ouviu o vosso clamor. E eis que eu estou abrindo os céus nesta hora. E derramando chuvas de bênçãos sobre essas três famílias em especial. Eu estou dizendo, eu estou ajustando toda a situação familiar. Eu estou abençoando, trazendo o meu amor para que vos ameis uns aos outros. Glorificai o meu nome, igreja, porque enquanto eu falava, os meus anjos passeavam no vosso meio e operavam todo o bem que há nas minhas mãos. Curas, libertações e salvação. Alegrai-vos por este presente que eu vos concedi. Oldrei canta, amarraciai. Aleluia. Louvado seja o nome do Senhor. Irmãos, pode colocar de pé. Uma palavra de glorificação ao Senhor. Glória a Deus. I want to praise the Lord because we are on your sanctuary for the benefits for our lives, for your sweet voice speaking once again to our hearts. We praise you and glorify the Lord because we have been, we have felt the manifestation of your power, of your love, your mercy to each one of us. We praise you for your people, for your church, because you have of what you have done for each one of us. I want to place on your throne our praise and adoration that will be received to you. Take us home in peace, our homes, under your protection, Lord, and give us the means to be here in this service of video for So once again, may glorify your holy name. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Abraham, the Lord has shown a gift 
And in this gift, I'm going to read it literally. It was seeing the church getting ready for a, a trip. And, and there were angels, and they began to notice if everyone had a, a passport. And we all needed to have passport. We need to show to those angels. And there's a man who's here. And when he was approached by the angel, he didn't have this passport. He had no means to show the passport. And then he said, I thought that because of the fact that I constantly heard the message here, I would have the right to go on this trip, even though I don't have a passport. And that's not how it works. The fact that you attend this church, or any church, or the fact that you come to the service doesn't give you the right for you to go to heaven. You need to have Jesus in your heart. He needs to make dwelling there. The short visitations, the doc doctor visitations, it's not enough. You need treatment. And this treatment is salvation in Jesus. You need to give yourself to the Lord. Have the passport. Have this guarantee and this means to enter into a new country. And you know exactly how it works. If you don't have here your passport or a visa, and you come here to America, you go back. But the Lord tonight is giving you this means to become a citizen of heaven. The Lord wants to give you this passport with this stamp, with this visa. They are going to lead you straight to heaven. You just need to stop being an attender of this church and become a participant, somebody that will go to live in heaven. And the Lord is also speaking to, with the youth, the trial that you are having. You need to overcome it using the means of grace. In the way you, in which you are doing with your own strength, you will not be able to be victorious. You need to exercise your means of grace. Prayer, especially praising and gratitude for what God has already given you, for everything that the Lord has done in your life, for the means that you have to know the gospel, to know the right path. Do this. Seek the Lord. Pray. And the Lord will answer to your request. Amen. Want to give assistance to the ones who want assistance, invite the brethren for this Tuesday at 1030. We'll be here for yet another feast. The life of the Christians like this, from feast to feast. And after the spiritual feast, we're going to have here a few sisters that are preparing here a dinner, a moment of uh, fellowship. And the brethren surely have already set it, everything up, what we need to do with the details. We want to say that the food is going to be served after if, if it is money left. If you want to take food home, it will be offered after everybody has eaten. So we are going to receive everyone, the visitors, with everything that they deserve. Not only the spiritual side, but also with love and care, the love of the sisters and the brothers and the youth that prepared this reception for our guests. We're going to arrive a little earlier. Let's not come here at 10.30. The praise group at what time? 10.30? Praise group, the earlier the better. We need to prepare. We have a small church by faith. This year is going to be the last vigil here. Amen. The place has already been purchased. The city cannot be holding this for much longer or from next year. In next year, the Lord, we're going to have a, a new year there. The harder was the Lord has already given. We already purchased. The parts has already been paid. We're now just waiting for the bureaucracy with the city so that we may begin the reform. But next year, we're going to have a lot of space. So this year, we we'll want the brethren to come a little earlier, we'll park far away. We're not going to have here. We're going to have here the, the tent and the place to serve the food. And so the brethren may 
prepare yourself to come earlier. Amen. Anything else? And to all the peace of the Lord Jesus. Ha, 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 ha.